Hey everyone, and welcome to my channel, Simply Daisy. So today, I'm gonna show you how to make this sweater. I've made it twice in purple and green, and I've really liked it. So I'm gonna show you a quick overview of how to construct the sweater and go through each of the steps really thoroughly so that you can adapt it to however you want your sweater to look. I made mine pretty chunky and cropped, so you can make it however you like, making it different lengths, different yarns. So I'm gonna go through that whole process, so let's get started. The sweater will be comprised of four pieces total, two identical sleeves, one front piece with a v-neck, and one back piece. So first we'll start off with the sleeves, and this is what it's going to look like folded and not folded. And this is for your reference, so you have an overview of what the sleeve will look like, as well as the vocabulary that I'll be using throughout the video. So feel free to screenshot or come back to this part if I say a word and you want to know what that word is referencing on the sleeve. I also have my sweater sizes down below for each of the sections of the sleeve. And I'm usually about a small or medium, but this ended up a little bit smaller than expected because the yarn is so chunky, and the purple yarn I was using was a little stiffer than the green yarn. So this is for your reference and adapt it to how you want it to fit and for your body type. Next up is the front piece and the back piece. And again, here's a diagram with the vocabulary and the sizes that I used. I would also recommend finding a sweater that you currently have so you can copy those dimensions and they can inform the size of your sweater that you're going to crochet. You will need yarn of your choice. I'll be using Bernat Softy Chunky, which made my sweater very chunky, but you can use whatever yarn that you like. I used about 21 ounces, which was six of these three and a half ounce skeins. And then I'll be using an 8mm crochet hook, some bobby pins for stitch markers, a sewing needle, pen and paper to write down notes about what you did, scissors, and a ruler, but I would also recommend a soft measuring tape because that'll be easier to take longer measurements. So to start the sleeve, take your yarn and make a slip knot, then insert your crochet hook and pull to tighten. Then we're going to make a chain that's the size of our ribbing width. I've already made my first sleeve, and I've taken some notes about the sizes, the number of stitches, and the rows that worked well. So when you're making your first sleeve, it's going to be a lot of trial and error, figuring out what sizes, number of stitches, work best for you. So don't be afraid to take something apart and try again. Once you figure out what does work, take those notes so that you can replicate it later for the second sleeve. So my ribbing width is 2 inches. And I know that's going to be a chain of five, so I'm just going to chain five by yarning over and pulling through. So that's three, four, and five. When you have the right width, you're going to chain one more, and then we'll do single crochet. Skipping the first chain and inserting into the second. To single crochet, we insert, yarn over, come out, yarn over, and pull through both loops. So again, insert, yarn over, come out, yarn over and pull through both loops. Just continue doing one single crochet into each of the chains until you get to the end of the chain. Okay, so there we go. We have one, two, three, four, five. Then we're going to chain one and flip our work. So to make the ribbing, we're going to be inserting into only the back loops. So you see this V for the single crochet. There's the back loop and the front loop. Normally we insert under both, but this time we're only going to insert under the back loop. So you can kind of twist your work a little bit, insert, yarn over, come out, yarn over and pull through two. So you can see the V, insert under only the back loop, doing the single crochet. And so leaving out that front loop is going to create that ribbing effect, it'll make a nice line, which is what we want for the ribbing of our sleeve. When you get to the end, make sure one, two, three, four, five, perfect. So you're just gonna continue this until you have the wrist width that you like. So my wrist width is nine and a half inches, which will be 22 rows. So just continue, chain one, and do single crochet into only the back loops. So now I'm done with the ribbing and we're going to chain one and then do single crochet into the top side of the ribbing so that we can create a foundation for the rest of the sleeve. So you can just kind of fit the single crochet wherever is comfortable. You don't want the spacing to be too tight or too loose. Um, this might require you to go back and redo parts of it to make sure that it looks natural and that you get around the right number. I did 22 rows for the ribbing and the number of rows you do for the ribbing is about the number of single crochet that you'll need for this top portion. So you can just kind of play around with the number and placement of the single crochet until you get something 
that works for your sleeve. Now we've finished with a single crochet and we have this piece that's the size of our wrist width and we're going to incorporate increasing rows which are going to increase the number of stitches and widen it until we get the size of our sleeve width. Then we're just going to continue with that width so it's the right size for our arm. So this next row is going to be an increasing row and the pattern that I'll be using is alternating double crochet and single crochet which I think creates a nice texture, but if you'd rather do all double crochet or a different pattern, you can do that, just do what works best for you. So to start this increasing row, we're gonna insert our crochet hook, and then we're going to chain three, which will serve as one double crochet. Flip our work, and the increasing is going to happen at the ends of the rows, when we put two stitches where there should just be one stitch, which will then widen it. So we have our double crochet and then a single crochet right into that first stitch. Then since we're gonna alternate, we do a double crochet into the next one and then single crochet and then double crochet. So just continue alternating until you get to the end of the row. So now I have one stitch left in this increasing row. My last stitch was a single crochet. So now I'm going to do one double crochet into the last stitch. And since increasing means we put two stitches where there should be one stitch, we'll do one single crochet into that same spot. And that's the end of the increasing row. And next, we're going to do a row with no increases. So to do that, we're going to chain three, which will serve as one double crochet. And we're doing a double crochet because there's a single crochet below. So whatever was below it, you're going to do the opposite. So this is serves as our double crochet, so we flip, there's a double crochet is the next one, so we do single crochet. And then same thing, next is double crochet. And then just continue until the end of the row, doing one stitch into each of these stitches all the way until the end. And you can also double check that you have the right number of stitches, because the number of single crochet that you had for this row below, there should be two more. So I had 22 for the single crochet row, now this row should have 24 stitches. So make sure you have the correct number and continue all the way across doing no increases in this row. To finish the no increase row, I'll do one single crochet into the top of this chain three and that's the end of the row. So next is an increase row because we'll alternate increase row, no increase row until we have the sleeve width that we want. So for this increase row, we know we'd put two stitches where there would be one stitch. And there needs to be a double crochet above this single crochet because that's how our pattern works. Single crochet needs a double crochet above it. So there needs to be a single crochet on the outside if we're putting two stitches in the same spot. So we chain one, which serves as our single crochet. Then flip your work, and then do the double crochet to go above the single crochet. And then single crochet, and just continue alternating until you get to the end of the row. At the end of this increase row, there's a chain three serving as a double crochet, so we do one single crochet above it, and then one double crochet into the same spot because we're putting two stitches where there would be one. So now it's the end of the increase row and just continue doing no increase, increase until you have the sleeve width that you want. My sleeve width will be 14 inches for a total of three increase rows. So I've done two already and I just need to do one more. So I'll meet you back once you have the sleeve width that you want. So now I'm done increasing and you can either continue doing no increase rows until you have the sleeve length that you want or I'll be doing nine rows and then an elbow patch, which kind of breaks up the sleeve and adds an extra detail to it. So I'll do those nine rows and then come back and show you how to do it. For the elbow patch, I'll be doing three rows of triple crochet. So to start, I'm going to chain four and then flip my work. Then to triple crochet, you yarn over twice. We're skipping this first stitch because this chain four counts as the triple crochet for that one. Then we're going to insert into the second, yarn over, come out, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. So you could do triple crochet, half double crochet, anything you want for the elbow patch. And I'll be doing three rows, which is about three and a half inches long for the elbow patch. And I'll meet you back when I'm done with that. After the elbow patch, just do no increase rows of the alternating double crochet, single crochet, until you have the sleeve length that you want. I'll be doing 12 no increase rows until I have a sleeve length of 19 inches. When you get to the end, chain one, pull, and then cut with your scissors. And there you go, that is the first sleeve. 
so make sure you take those notes and replicate that for the second sleeve. For the front piece, start by making the ribbing in the exact same way as the sleeve. My ribbing width is 2 inches, and then continue doing a single crochet into only the back loops until it's the size of the body width. My body width is 17 inches and a total of 42 rows of single crochet. Then you're going to do single crochet into that top side of the ribbing to create the foundation for the rest of the body. I did 37 single crochet into the top of the ribbing, and then you can continue doing no increase rows of double crochet and single crochet alternating until you have the below the V length that you like. My length will be 6 inches for a total of 13 rows. So now I've finished the no increase rows and it's time to start on the V neck of the sweater. So I've already put a bobby pin or you can put a stitch marker right in the middle. And so we're going to work one side at a time and gradually decrease the number of stitches from the center to create that V shape. So we'll start normally by doing the alternating single crochet and double crochet until you get to the center. So now I'm at the middle and I have two stitches left. The stitch marker is in the exact center stitch because I have an odd number and we're not going to be working into it. We're only going to work into these last two stitches and we'll decrease. So to decrease, we're going to start this stitch here, which should be a single crochet. So we insert, yarn over, come out, and then we're not going to finish the stitch. We're going to start the next one. It should be a double crochet, so we yarn over, insert, yarn over, come out, then yarn over and pull through only the first two loops. Then we have three loops, and then we yarn over and pull through all three loops. So we had two stitches, but it only resulted in one stitch, which decreases the number of stitches in this row and will help create that V shape. So next, we're going to continue the next row like normal. So we have a single crochet here, so we need a double crochet on top of it, which the chain three serves as a double crochet. Then flip our work, and then continue to the end doing normal, alternating double crochet and single crochet, and then come back to the middle, and I'll show you how to decrease again. So now we're back and we did this decrease from this first row, we did a normal row and did another normal row coming back and now it's time to decrease again. So we have these two stitches, a single crochet and then a chain three counting as a double crochet. So to decrease we need to start this double crochet right here. So we yarn over, insert, yarn over, come out, yarn over and pull through only the first two loops. Then we start the next stitch, leaving this one unfinished. So we start it by inserting into the top of the chain three yarn over, come out, so we have three loops on the hook, then yarn over and pull through all three loops. So again, this decreased, we had two stitches and it only resulted in one. As you can see, the V shape is starting to form, so we're just going to continue this process. We're going to chain one, which counts as a single crochet on top of this double crochet, then do another normal row, come back, do a normal row, and decrease until you have the V neck depth and width that you like. I'll be doing about 12 more rows for a total of 15 rows, that should give me about an 8 inch v-neck depth, and so I'll meet you back once I've completed that. So now I'm at the end, and you can chain one, pull, and then cut with your scissors. And there you go, that's one side done, so now it's time to start on this side. So now we're at the middle, and we're going to start this side a little bit differently by attaching our yarn in the middle, because these stitches on this side are going to the left, and we want the stitches to look the same on both sides. So as you can see, I have my stitch marker in the very center stitch that we'll leave empty. So we'll work into the stitch next to it. Insert your crochet hook, then grab your yarn and wrap it around the hook. Then pull it through and make a knot. Then insert your crochet hook into that same stitch, yarn over and come out to get the loop on your hook. Then we're just going to work a normal row. Uh, this is a single crochet, so I'll chain three to count as a double crochet. And then keep going, alternating single crochet and double crochet until you get to the end. And when you get to the end, just do another normal row, and I'll meet you back at the middle. Now we're at the middle, and we have two stitches left, so it's time to decrease. So we'll do that again by yarning over, insert, yarn over, come out, yarn over, and pull through two to start that double crochet, but we won't finish it and move on and start the single crochet into the top of the chain three, insert, yarn over, come out, yarn over, and pull through all three loops. So then you're just going to continue. This is a double crochet here, so it needs a single crochet on top. So we'll just chain one, 
flip your work, do a normal row, and then come back to the middle and decrease, and just continue this pattern until you have the same number of rows on each side. So I'll be doing 13 more for a total of 15 on this side. When you get to the end, chain one, pull, and then cut with your scissors. So this is the front piece, we did the ribbing, and then the below the v-neck part, and then we did each side of the v-neck. And it looks pretty deep right now, but we're going to be adding about an inch to an inch and a half of ribbing on both sides of it, so it'll be much smaller for the final product. So next up is the back piece, and you're just going to repeat the same process as the front piece. So you're going to do the ribbing, the exact same ribbing width, then do it until it has the same body width. Then you're going to do the single crochet along the edge of the ribbing, and then the alternating double crochet, single crochet, no increased rows until you have the same body length as the front piece. So now we're done with all four pieces and it's time to start putting it all together. So the first thing we need to establish is what we want the sweater to look like when we're wearing it. And so I chose this side for the sweater because I like how the single crochet looks here. We were doing the single crochet to the left and I think it just accentuates the ribbing versus this side I don't think looks as good. So this is going to be the right side of my work and this is the wrong side. And I made the same choice for the sleeves. I like how the single crochet looks here with the ribbing. So this is the right side. Then what you're going to do is flip all of your pieces so the wrong side is showing. So you're gonna flip all of them and then we're gonna start slip stitching and connecting all of the pieces. So how I'm going to do that, I'll show you a little bit more up close, but just an overview of how we'll do that is I'll probably start right here slip stitch along this top piece, then go around the sleeve to slip stitch it on all sides, and then probably end my work, and then start again here, and then slip stitch down the side. And repeat the same thing for both sides. If there's a different way that you'd like to connect all the pieces, feel free to do that. Then after that, we'll be doing the ribbing around the v-neck to finish it off. So to start slip stitching the two pieces together, I have the front piece and the back piece, and they're both on the wrong side facing out. So the first thing I'm going to do is insert my crochet hook into that last stitch. And I'm also going to insert it into the corresponding stitch on the back piece. So there are 10 stitches in this front piece, so I found the 10th stitch and I'm going to insert where my stitch marker is. Then take out the stitch marker, get my new piece of yarn, wrap it around the hook, and then pull through. Then I'm going to make a knot to attach them together. Then insert my crochet hook into both of those stitches, yarn over and come out to get the loop on my hook. Then I'm going to slip stitch into the corresponding stitches. So this is the next stitch for the front piece, and then the next stitch for the back piece, yarn over, come out, and then pull through. That's one slip stitch. Again, insert, insert, yarn over, come out, and pull through. So just continue until you get to the end. Now I'm at the end and I need to start connecting it to the sleeve. So I put a stitch marker into the middle of the sleeve so that I know that it'll be exactly symmetrical. And then I'm just going to remove the stitch marker and insert my crochet hook to slip stitch the two pieces together initially. And then I'm just going to continue slip stitching the front piece to the sleeve and I'll have to insert the crochet hook into places that align well with the sleeve. You want to make sure that's not too bunched up or too tight because this is the part that'll be around your armpit and you don't want it to be too tight while you're wearing it. So just try to make sure that it aligns well and isn't too tight. I'm going to start at this bottom corner and slip stitch up to the armpit and then go down the sleeve. Now we've done one side of slip stitching the sweater pieces together, going along the top, around the arm, and then starting at the bottom and going along the sleeve. So just repeat the process on the other sleeve starting at the top, go around the sleeve, then start at the bottom and go up the sleeve. So now I'm done attaching and I flipped everything so the right side is out and it's time to start on the ribbing around the v-neck. So we're gonna insert our crochet hook into this center stitch that we left empty from when we were making the v-neck. Wrap your yarn around the hook and then pull through and make a knot to attach the yarn to the sweater. Insert into the same spot, yarn over and come out. 
Then we're going to chain one and do a single crochet into that same spot. So insert, yarn over, come out, yarn over, and pull through two. So then we're going to be doing a single crochet all the way around the v-neck and along the back until we have a nice base for the ribbing. So just insert along the edges, making sure they're not too tight and too bunched up, but kind of well spaced around the v-neck. Once you get back to the center, you're going to slip stitch into that original single crochet. So insert, yarn over, and pull through. Then we're going to make a chain. I'll be chaining four. And this will be approximately the width of your ribbing. Next, we're going to do single crochet, skipping this first chain and inserting into the second. Insert, yarn over, come out, yarn over, and pull through both loops. When you get to the end, you're going to slip stitch into the next two single crochet. So slip stitch here, and then here. Next, you're going to do single crochet into the back loops of this part that we've already done. So it's a little bit hard to tell, so we have one, two, three, and we have to insert into the back loops. When you get to the end, you're going to chain one, and then flip, and again work into the back loops of the single crochet. Once you finish the single crochet, again we're going to slip stitch into the next two single crochet along the V. And then just keep repeating this process of doing a single crochet into the back loops, chain one, single crochet into the back loops, and then slip stitch into the next two single crochet along the V. Once you've gone all the way around and finished off your work, use the excess tail to sew the flap into the initial part of the ribbing. To finish it off, weave in all your ends and your sweater is done. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.